ready to do something the rest of this year. Amen. Let's not just look, start looking forward to next year and, and say, well, we'll make some New Year's resolutions. We'll, we'll call for some new beginnings. Let's start this week. Amen. 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 Let's start at the end of this year and say, God, for the next two months, I want you to prepare me. Yes. I want you to begin to feed me bread. Yes. You must understand, it, and I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of graze over this so you can go home and study it out in a more in-depth thing. If he had not had taken him place to the place where God had told him, the provision would have still been there, but he would not have. Right. Because God says, you take yourself. I'm going to use you for a minute, Elijah. <laughs> he says, you take yourself. Okay, just stand right here for a minute. This is kind of like us. Turn towards me. This is kind of like us. We come up. We want to hear the voice of the Lord. Amen? Right. So we come up and we hear. And the, the Lord speaks to us. And just imagine this for a minute. If God would have told him everything. He didn't. But just, just for the sake of arguing. Imagine for a minute if God would have told him everything that he was about to happen in the next year to two years of his life. And if he would have told Elijah, said, Elijah, you are about to bring salvation to a widow woman's household. You are about to bring uh, a provision for those who have lack. You are about to rebuild altars. Yes. You are about to be such a man of faith and a man of prayer that when you say, God, rain down fire, I'm going to acknowledge it. Amen. Huh? Yes. But this is what you and I do. We hear those words. Do this. We get a little jig in our stick. We get a little goosebump down our spine. Amen. Mm -hmm. But instead of then, God said, but I need you to come over here by this brook. Because you need to... Uh, God didn't say, I was going to force you to drink. He said, if you go by the brook and hide yourself, and if you begin to yes. drink, yes. I then will cause ravens to fly over you, yes. drop provision in you in the form of bread, in the space of drought and famine. Amen. That's good. This is a time where there's drought in the land, which means there's no water, and famine, which means there's no bread. But yet Elijah, because he does the word of the Lord and hides himself in a way, never ceases to drink and never ceases to eat. While the rest of the country that he is in is in famine. While the rest of the people are starving. Yes. But here's what we do. We get a little jig. We hear the good part of what God is going to do. Pastor Tim, God is getting ready to do some awesome ministries in new life. And this person's going to do that. And this person's going to do that. And all of us get to shout. But then this is what we do. We Instead of going to Cherith, this is what we do right here. Kind of what Tamanda was saying. Huh? Mm -hmm. The things would have never happened, I believe personally, would have never happened in Elijah's life had he not committed himself to a place of covenant. I'm going to show you that. Come here for a minute. So Elijah says, all right, we're going to pretend this is the brook. Come over here. We're going to let you sit on the front row. <laughs> so he comes over here, and he hides himself away. And it explicitly says that he stayed there. Everybody, turn to your neighbor and say, would you stay there? Would you stay there? Notice, during this time of preparation... And there's going to be about half of you that hate this part. <laughs> During this time of preparation, he did not have visitors. That's true. <laughs> he did not get up on Tuesday and go back to his house. Yeah. Didn't the Bible says that he stayed there? Right. Huh? Come Wednesday, he didn't break out his Blackberry and start texting because he was getting a little anxious and lonely. Mm -hmm. Everybody turn to the other neighbor and say, would you please stay there? I believe sometimes God's promises and God's miracles that he wants to do in our life gets delayed because we do this number. We get in a place of the brick of cherub and we feel, that we feel good one day and we make a commitment but then two days later
later we start doing this. Well, you know, maybe God didn't mean to stay there 24-7. <laughs> Maybe God didn't really need for me to stay there. Maybe I can just mingle back in with my friends and my... Maybe I can just begin to call up and, you know, I just want to hang out. Huh? Now this is going to be tough for a minute. Maybe God really didn't need to stay there all the time. But unless you have a weird Bible... My Bible doesn't have a clause in there that says go there on Sunday and Wednesday. Right, right. <laughs> it doesn't say there, go only there when you have Bible study That's class. Right. It says go by the brook Cherith yes. and stay there. Amen. That was a key. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get all his exercise in this week, so I'm helping him out. <laughs> go there and stay there. What does the brook Cherith mean? If you look it up in the Greek, it actually is a covenant. Because the brook, the Hebrew word and the Greek word both for cherith means a place of cutting. And when you make a covenant with God, if you read about how covenants were made in the Old Testament, it started with a cutting of an animal, a sacrifice. And it was between two parties. Mm -hmm. One party brought one thing and one party brought another thing. Right. And they laid it on the altar. And then the person in charge, which would be God, he, he cut the uh, sacrifice in half. And then some rituals and routines would happen. And they both would partake of the sacrifice. They both would do some rituals with the blood. And, and they'd put salt and all these things. And I don't want to take the time to go into all that. That's why I'm hurrying. But it was between two parties making a covenant relationship with one another saying that no matter what I'm with you and you're with me that no matter what no matter who else comes into my life that I'm in fellowship with you and you are in fellowship right. with me that no matter what else happens in my life that I will get your back and you get mine yes so Elijah here he's not in here just with his feet kicked up but he's in a place and he's making a covenant with God saying I don't what my circumstances look like, God, I am going to be in covenant relationship yes. with you. Because if I'm in covenant relationship with the Father Creator, it doesn't matter what's going on because He's already proven that in the middle of feast and famine, He will cause me to drink and cause me to eat. That's why it doesn't make me afraid to make covenant relationship Amen. with Him. Amen. But then, there comes a time where the Bible says, well, first of all, let me get to the, let me let me show you something else real quick. That he's getting ready to do all these exploits, and the Bible says that as you drink from the brook, there'll be plenty of water, and as you drink, then I'm going to cause ravens to fly over. If you know anything about the raven, it is a scavenger bird. Mm -hmm. Amen. They're ugly. They're not cute, and most people don't buy them and put them in a bird cage in your house because they're scavenger birds. They're ugly. It means that they are the ones that eat the carcasses of things that right. are dead. If you think about a blackbird or a scavenger bird, a crow, a raven, they are the kind of birds that you always see in the movies that are flying around. And if they're in the desert, you know something is either about to die or has already died. And they're just waiting for the opportune moment to come down and pick the bones clean. Right. But the Bible says that as, as Elijah is in the place of of covenant that ravens are coming across him and dropping bread and morsels of meat for him to eat. Now get this. If you're in the land somewhere and you've heard of Elijah and you've heard of his school and you kind of know what's going on and now you have heard what Elijah has done which was he comes to King Ahab and he says because of your disobedience and because of your wrongful doing I'm going to uh, Elijah is saying the word of the Lord is to you that I'm going to cause drought and famine in the land which is like a smack in the face to the king because in the Bible days when famine and drought means it was like a chastisement of God because that's how they grew their crops so they knew it as a chastisement for God and so now the rest of the country, the rest of the people around has probably heard the rumor that did you hear what Elijah said? 